So I thought I'd um, show you what I'm doing um, for the next um, fox cub in this uh, Body Snowden fox cub tutorial. So I've got a little selection here of my um, Museum at Corral pencils and what I've done and I'm sure lots of people out there do this kind of thing is I've done um, a nice you know um, what do you call these swatches I suppose yeah swatches which has got some mess on the bottom anyway incidentally so that's a really good um, guide because you know you sometimes look at the pencils for example this light flesh one here is nothing like um, can you see it's nothing really like what it looks like on the swatch um, and say for instance well I might pick out this sepia this is sepia 50% and think oh that's really dark um, but in reality uh, it's actually quite pale I don't know if you can pick that up it's quite pale compared um, I've laminated these because I know what a mucky pup I can be um, so for this particular um, tutorial that Bonnie Snowden is doing um, she isn't doing it with um, the watercolour base that, that's more something I've picked up from Animal Art by Law um, and thought I'd give it a go so what I've picked out for these is um, sepia 50% um, sepia 10% they're really good base colours for um, animals especially the sepia 10% it's a really lovely um, light brown you can see there that, that it's not too dark not too light but can show you where you're going so if you do happen to make a mistake with that one um, you're home and dry I've got dark flesh 50% dark flesh 50% that one was and light flesh 10% um, Payne's grey I just picked these out by just looking through my colour swatches really. Raw Sienna, um, Steel Grey I've got there. That's really good for these um, light um, areas in the fur, the, the bluey areas I think. Um, this brown olive um, you perhaps wouldn't think of using necessarily but that was nice in these more receding areas of the of the fox and I probably would like to use that around here. I've got some Naples um, ochre which was good for all the sort of highlighty bits and then this one which is olive brown which I kind of think it's almost identi identical to the brown olive. So that's the shades that I picked out and I don't know I'm no expert I'm just playing along really. So I thought I'd give it a go at showing you um, the technique that I did to get that um, onto this one, I didn't really go in with um, fur strips because I'm figuring that I'll, I'll be able to do that in, in the when I come through with proper colour pencil. So I'm going to first start, I don't know why, pick out the olive brown just because, why not? And I've got my glassine paper here to stop me making a big old mess of it. But I, again, with making a mess around here, um, Animal Art by Law said you can use, um, and I've seen her do this, um, where she uses these magic erasers to just basically pick out all the gubbins that you manage to get. And it does work really, really well. Because I think this pastel mat is pretty good at um, picking up all the mucky bits on your fingers, even if you're trying to be careful. So I'm just going to go in now with the um, Olive Brown Museum Aquarel and I'm just going to uh, follow the reference that I can see here. Um, maybe just move this over slightly so you can see my reference. So I think in his head here, he, she, she's got some lovely greeny bits and it's just about, I think, um, just squiggling in. Um, the areas that you can see, I haven't even had to um, use any pencil um, strokes or fur. I haven't even gone in that direction because of because of using the, the pastel mat. I've just 
I found with this one, all I needed to really do was just kind of very lightly pressure like like that, really gentle, um, just to kind of find where I am and where I'm going. And, and even if I make a mistake, well, blow it. I'm just going to do it anyway. See where we go. See how it all pans out. So I've put the the dark tones in a little bit already, following the tutorial, as as Bonnie said. Um, you know to use the dark pencil. Then I thought, well, I'll just try, perhaps try it with um, with watercolor pencils. See now, I think I've gone a bit too much there. Um, I've got the um, kneaded eraser. I did try. I did try the. What are these kneaded erasers? And I found them, I found them too um, hard. I can't get them to go into the point that I want. And I suppose, well, they are, they're pretty good in, in that respect. But this one is like blue tack. So it's quite handy to have both. And this one, I suppose, is a bit more of a pat to get rid of, to get rid of the bits. So I'm just gonna experiment with both and see how they go. So I'm not really too worried about, about it going over, or I didn't really want it to go there. So that will just blob on out. Um, and then let's just try with this raw sienna. Um, it's just literally just blocking in where I think that might roughly go. Kind of goes a bit in a bit of a shaded area there and that's what I'm seeing holding the pencil quite far back it I'm not putting much pressure I'm not pressing hard at all it's just a case of just sort of getting a little bit of pigment down on the paper there um, and then what's this brown olive again I think a bit of brown olive there in, in those ears. And perhaps a bit, a little bit there where he's got the shadow. Um, and I can see in his ear there is really quite dark. So this is the Payne's Grey. Not particularly going in any direction, just blobbing it on to be honest with you. You can see it goes over the edge a bit. I might need a little bit of that dark indigo there just, just to get a bit of depth. And perhaps a bit sprutled in there. So I'm just scantling, scantily working across the page, um, just really quite haphazardly, you know, trying to pick out, oh, I can't find that, pick out what I can see. Um, okay, let's just go for it. Let's just pop the kind of bluey, this is still grey. Squiggle that in. You can see there's quite a lot of blue and shadow. And, and like I said in the other video, you can go over this with the white. I suppose it's just literally that blocking in what you can see. Um, I don't know if some people use just one colour at a time but I feel like I'm just going to go where my eye leads me to go Okay, 
something in some of that colour. So I've already put, you can see where I've put the actual colour pencil down and um, trying to map in areas. But I'm not really worried about that. I'm just going to go over all of that um, because it doesn't seem to matter. And and I didn't realise this and we were all busy. I, I've been very busy trying to blend my coloured pencils and using mineral spirits and things like that. But I didn't actually realise that you they seem to dissolve really quite nicely um, even with water and and that's something I never knew probably they don't dissolve as well um, as they would with you know as they do with, with the mineral so I, I use the Zestip blend um, to blend my coloured pencils when I am but I do find it a bit of a pain and um, waiting for it to dry and um, the, uh, it, it can sometimes be a bit misleading because it can make things so much darker and you're not quite sure um, if that's exactly what you wanted um, but it has worked really, really well for me with commissions that I've done just pop a bit. I'm just literally just sort of scribbling really scribbling where I can see um, the dark bits really which is what, what Bonnie was telling us to do only I'm going to do it with the watercolour pencils and see how that works instead so this is all still with the with the Payne's grey this can all be gone over um, when it's dry um, with any colour you like, even your light colours, which is really wonderful, I think. I think that's absolutely marvellous because as, as we know as coloured pencil artists and watercolour artists, it's so hard to get um, any white retrieved in our work and having to concentrate so hard on on. And preserving the whites it's um, a bit of a thing isn't it to find something where you can kind of go ahead and make a monkey of it all and <laughs> find a, that you've actually got a salvageable piece of art at the end of it is that maybe in there i'm not really quite sure it seems to be well again who cares let's just pop it in because of course the blue and the oranges are going to go so lovely together as complementary colours on the colour wheel so I'm not really afraid of, of using um, those tones. This is Royal Sienna which I thought would be rather nice to pop in the back of there and maybe a little bit of that um, light flesh 10% Got that in there. And then I think because that foreleg is coming, you can see the light there. I'm just going to pop a bit of lighter yellow there. It's just so rough, this. Just literally just trying to squint my eyes and see um, what it is exactly I'm looking at. Um. I can see there is, what's this, raw sienna, I'll say there's a bit of that in there. So I'm not even going in the direction of the fur, I'm just blobbing it. That is indeed a term, blobbing, plopping a bit in there. So I'm just looking at where the, where the colours are, mapping them in, blobbing them in, and well, We'll deal with it when it's dry. I think there might be a bit of a shade of, of that going somehow along the back there. Who knows? Let's try it and see. Sepia 10% is rather nice. Oh no, I don't know. Pop, pop, pop a bit of 
that in there. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm just trying to map in, map in my fox in a kind of shady, squint through your eyelashes kind of way. Um, so he's actually got, or she, has got quite a lot of this bluey area down through there. So just carry on that through there and um, look under here there's quite a lot there of that blue a bit more delicately here the more pigment you put down and um, the darker it will be um, and just try to remember that you know you don't it will always come out darker the minute you put the water on. But then when the water fades, when it when it dries, I mean, um, you know, everything will go back pale again. And you can always go over it, which is what I'm really loving about this. Mix a bit of um, steel grey in with that Payne's grey. So it's really rough this. It feels like I'm really not um, putting much effort into this really. Uh, let's see. Maybe this is the light flesh 10%. I'm just going to squiggle a bit of that in. Let's see it's there around his ears there. I, I don't know, is he, is this the female and that's the male, or is he the male and he's wooing her? I need to understand the story here, the romance. Olive brown, just to kind of pull that in, pulling that in into there, shading a little bit into there. Mixing it in with that steel grey. I know there's a bit of a darker thing around his hair, his mouth there. Mix a bit of that blue in, still grey with the olive brown. Bits where the fire goes dark there. And then raw sienna. And I'm just going to pop that into there where I think that tufty ear is sticking. And 
Dapat mo po siya magod. Yeah, it was ochre. So that was nice for the lighter areas over here. Back to the brown olive, 50%. Just because I feel there's some shading going on there, I can just blur in. yellow might not be exact but it's just going to give us a guide it's going to give me a guide as to what is going on where It's really, really sketchy at the moment. I'm really not pressing too hard. Um, and I think I'm just going to fill in those lighter but dark areas of her foot. No, steel grey. Because they seem to be um, in, a, in a colder shadow there. Like I say, we can really add to them later. Um, so I think, I think I'm fairly happy with um, well, we'll have to see in a minute, won't we, when we put it to the test. Right, here we go then. Blubbing the water out and then having quite a wet, wet brush, hopefully. Yep. Oh, moment of truth. Because I'm right-handed, I'm going to go from the left to the right. I feel a bit more confident this time, having done it with one. sweeping through. Definitely much more confident this time. Um, the first fox was a bit hair-raising. It's not about um, achieving 
realism at this stage it's literally just to give me an idea of where things are and where the colours might be um, and again I can change all of that as we go through so the lines you can see still um, are those that I put down initially um, when I was following Bonnie's tutorial to the letter um, and trying to lay in the tones um, with the colour pencil and then I thought I'd have a go at doing it this way which I'm really enjoying for me I think this is a, a bit of a quicker process and, and actually it's just so much fun to see um, the watercolour pencil turn so vibrantly it's like one of those magic um, colouring books you might have had when you were a child where you activated things with water or scratched out the top layer and found there was wonderful things underneath it's just giving me um, a foundation Look at that, I can even go right over in some permissions. I was far too scared to do that on the other one. Even when I've got these darts, I know you have to be careful about not mixing the darts with the lights, but they don't seem to mix, they seem to stay where they are. Look, I can just go right over that. And that, that dark there has not mixed in with that orange bit there. I think if you messed about putting lots and lots of water layers, it probably would. But as animal art by law has been saying on her YouTube, um, don't do that. Just go over it, you've activated it, and that's that. And here I am doing exactly the opposite of what I just said not to do. Just can't help it. But it hasn't hurt anything. There's a bit there that's a bit harsh. I don't know if I can reactivate. But yeah, look, look, I can reactivate that a little bit just to make that a bit softer. So all these details around the eyes and the nose and everything, that will be added in. Um, but it's just given me um, a bit of a basis, hasn't it, for what I want where, where the lights and darks are, and I'm really quite happy with that. So I really do hope that helps people out there and encourages people to buy more equipment, which is um, what it does to me usually, it makes me go shopping crazy. So there we are, that's um, my second demo for my little fox cub. Thank you, Bonnie, for showing us uh, your wonderful tutor, and I will carry on watching how to do it properly now that I've messed about as my foundation layer but also thank you Animal Art by Law um, for showing us you know a good way of getting all your tones in so thanks guys